Welcome back to Satisfactory, folks. I have been doing a bit of calculating on what is going to be needed to make uh, motors, because that is ultimately the project project that we're uh, working on at the moment. We've made the modular frames, uh, which we need for sending off the space elevator. And the other thing we need is motors, and we need 150 of them. So, if we look at motors, they produce five per minute, and it's two rotors and two stators, so 10 per minute. So I want 10 machines making motors. And I've been doing a bit of math to find out what we actually need to be able to make these uh, five per minute times 10, so 50 motors per minute. And I have put it all in a little the notepad here so for motors 50 motors a minute we need 10 machines which is 100 rotors a minute and 100 stators a minute so to make 100 rotors a minute we need 17 machines that's 306 iron rods a minute that we need for those 17 machines and it's 2244 screws a minute that we need for those machines that's quite a few screws so for the screws, we need 25 machines making screws, and that's 375 iron ingots a minute. So we actually just need one iron smelting setup to supply all of these screws, which is pretty nice. But then we get to stators, and for 100 stators a minute, we need 17 machines making them. We need 306 steel pipes a minute. We're already producing that, but I think we're going to need to set up another steel pipeline. Uh, I'm sure we are because we're already using quite a few of them, the, the ones that we're making. And then we need 100, uh, 1,020 wire a minute. So that's basically the same setup that we have. If we just move this out of the way and see. So that's basically the same setup as we have here. This produces 1,350 wire a minute which our, um, what are they called? Reinforced iron plate or stitched iron plate. They're using all of it. And right now I know we're not producing all of that wire because we simply don't have the belts to, to move them along. But once we do, we'll be producing 1,350 there. So what I'm thinking is, if we put, set up three more smel uh, smelting lines, that's another 1,350, and we only use the 1,020. So that's 330 wires a minute that we are not using. And those could go into being turned into our own personal wire storage and making cables for our own personal wire storage. So I think that is the plan for that. And I am gonna go ahead and set up all of these production lines. And then I'll be back when I'm done and we will see them all get going together. So yeah, see you in a few guys. This is gonna take a while. Right, so uh, I have built up quite a bit of what we need not all of it i'm not uh, i'm not even half done i think but down here we now are producing 2700 screws a minute and we need 2244 i think so these three lines are screw producers and then i decided to build up instead of to the side so this is going to be a very tall uh, factory floor it's high to the ceiling and that's because the moth or the thing the flying thing whatever it's called is coming through here and it's actually going under the floor here and through the factory and yeah it is what it is it is what it is so over there you can see a tall conveyor stack that's six lines of of um, screws that are coming out okay if we run upstairs and take a look 
I have set up three lines of wire production as well. So that's a total of 1,350 wire we'll be producing here. And we only need 1,020 for the motor production. So the overflow will be going into producing wire and cable for our, ourselves. So that's what 330 wires per minute that we'll be producing for ourselves and we'll be turning half of that into cable. So I think that will uh, be fine. And I took a little flight on the thing before and there's actually, which I hadn't noticed, there's three copper nodes over here, I think. And then there's four iron nodes. I knew about the iron nodes and I knew about one of the copper nodes. I don't think I knew about the other two copper nodes. So that should fulfill our need for copper and iron for, for this project, which is fantastic. So what is left to do? Let's have a look. If we take a look here, we have the screws and we have the wires. Where is the wires? There. So we have half our rotor production set up. So iron rods. We actually have all of our rotor production set up because we're not using the iron rods that we already have. So we have rotor productions ready. We just need to set up the actual production of the rotors, but we have the materials ready for it. And we have the wires set up. We just need to hook in some uh, copper ore. And then we need to make some more steel pipe. So that is going to mean that We'll have to widen this building by two, maybe three foundations. And that's okay. That's not a problem. That is not a problem. So we do have this entire floor here, but downstairs we have wires uh, or uh, not wires, steel pipe being made. So I want to make that one floor for steel pipe. So yeah, and we might need more steel pipe. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, we are making progress and here he comes. Let's just jump down here and whoops, that hurt. Take a look. I built up three walls here and I actually think his wing clips a little bit through one of them, which means I'll take it down to two walls. Yeah, it does. It clips through one of them, so I'll remove this. Because I don't want him clipping through there. There we go. And he just makes it over the end of the machines there. But we can actually jump onto, onto him from up there. But I think I'll probably put some walkway underneath here to maybe make it a, a stop that we can get on and off the flying thing take a ride once in a while uh, yeah so let me get on with it and build up the rest that we need widen the building build the extra machines and so on and then i'll be back see you in a second guys okay so next step is done as you can see, I have made, uh, well, this kind of wall, these walls, the, what are they called? Uh, aluminium walls, metal walls. I have made a floor up there of those. And that is to kind of to indicate that it's a utility floor. And I changed the walkway here or the beltway here to be that color as well because that is really utility so 
we are getting closer to having our motors done, but we are not done yet. We are not done yet. But if we run up here and have a look, I have six belts of screws going over right there. And then I have a belt of rods going over there. And if we run in here, actually let's run up here first and take a look at our utility floor or spaghetti floor, whatever you want to call it. I, I call it a utility floor because spaghetti floors sound so negative. Utility sounds much more positive. So we have the rods coming over here. You can see them up there, kind of. Let's just jump up and have a look. There are the rods and the screws are coming along here. Three belts going out there and three belts going out over there. Just run over and have a look. Whoa. So yeah, and here we have overflow of screws and I don't actually remember what that is. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> okay, so this is a utility floor. This is going to be a floor full of belts and basically nothing else, just belts, belts going here and there and everywhere. And it will supply uh, both the floor above, but not really the floor above, the two floors above, and the floor below. And the floor above, the reason it won't be supplying the floor above is because, whoa, sorry about that, is because this is going to be my uh, personal storage floor. So we have. I've moved most of the personal storage up there, well, two out of three, so I guess it is most. And basically we have the modular frames there, we have reinforced iron plate there, and this is was just a bin to move the stuff up top. And we'll be moving the beams up here as well. And if we run back down, go and have a look in here. I have set up rotor production and it's, it looks a little bit weird. It looks a little bit weird, but it works. I hope I haven't tested it out yet, but I hope it works. But the thing is, if we look at one of these machines, or the uh, assemblers, it takes 132 screws per minute. So that's, what, 264, 396 screws per minute. Which means that we have 54 screws overflowing for every three machines. So I have set up 18 machines here we only needed 17 to make the motors but i did 18s because then we have a machine that just does overflow for our own personal use so we need all six of our screw belts to supply these and then we will have in excess of let's see around 350 screws or something like that after they're done so what I've done is, uh, actually, it's probably easier to see on the other side, maybe. I'm not actually sure. But the screws are going to come in on the top line here, or the middle line. And they are coming from down here. We have the screw input there for nine of the machines. And we have the screw input not there for nine of the machines. So the screws are going to come in to this one and the two above. And if we just jump up here, so we'll have screws going in here, there and there, and they will come in and the bottom line will feed the first three machines. And then the 56 screws that are overflowing will 
be going up into this merger and this belt the second highest belt will drop down and feast feed the next three machines so the overflow th screws are always on the top belt and if we jump over another nine uh, was that that yeah so then again three more machines 56 screws will overflow and they will come up here and go on the uppermost belt and again the middle belt will drop down and feed the next three machines come on ah. belt spasms and again the overflow will go up into a merger and it will run over here and we will have the same going for the next nine machines so we have an overflow of yeah around 350 screws or something like that i don't remember the exact number but and we will have the rods which i forgot to make the well, let's just do that real quick i forgot to make the uh, come on I need to remove that okay so you will come in here go over here Is that right that looks kind of right okay there and go in there and that is right there okay so the rods will run along and feed all 18 machines because we are making left rods for that and the rods will just come down here and we'll have an a rod overflow as well which i think i did make no i didn't was this the rod overflow? I don't remember. Never mind. I don't think I made a rod overflow. But there is a rod overflow and we will need to get the rods out of here and going up somehow as well. I guess it'll be here. All right. So all we need to do, all, all the machines are powered up and they are configured and everything. So all we, we really need to do now is hook them in and see them get going i guess let's remove these power stackable poles for now and they're already removed there and then we will put them in back back in uh, afterwards so i guess i'll do you on top you in the middle and you in the bottom and I'll do the same over here. You uh, on top. You in the middle. And we can't do this one. Just do that. And that. And you on the bottom. There we go. So that should have our screws going. Yes, it does. And then we have the pipes or the rods coming in here and they'll just go into there All right and that should start producing some rotors for us and it is very nice so that is rotor production going let's just see that everything is working so and are we getting rotors on our overflow or uh, screws on our overflow? Yes, we are. And the rods are coming along. Screws are coming along. And of course, I know we still only have the 270 belts or the Mark 3 belts, but eventually it'll be Mark 4 and then all will be producing 100%. Okay. And we should be getting rods down and around here. Yes, we are. And we are getting overflow screws down around. Yes, we are. 
and they're backed up because I didn't put in a bin for them. But let's just jump up here and see. Are is stuff coming along? Doesn't look like we're getting screws. Yeah, we are getting screws. They're just not making that making it that far yet. And there's something wrong here. There is something wrong with here. This belt is probably going the wrong way. So let's just see. There. To there. There we go. Screws are coming along there as well. Hey, are they all going the wrong way? I wonder. There we go. Okay, that's it. That fixed it. All right. So, a heck of a lot of screws. Well, on, I want to get on top of it. Can I get on top of it? I thought I could. Yeah, I can. There we go. All right. So, a heck of a lot of screws coming along here. And no rods. Why are there no rods? There should be rods. There's one. I suppose it's uh, filling up the other ones. But eventually they will be coming along. And I actually think the rods are on very, very slow belts at the moment. I need to fix that. But, yeah. So we have these conveyor lifts going up into the overflow or onto the overflow uh, conveyor belt and we are producing and we need to stick our output where is the output i forget can i get through here yes i can the output is there we'll stick the output on there and it actually doesn't need to be threes it needs to be twos so let's just see, do I have, I do, there, all right, so we have rotors being made, and they are coming up top to our utility floor, and being uh, so far doing nothing. Because they're going to be turned into motors, right? But if we look up here, we should have rotors coming out. I think here. We just stick in a conveyor belt mod 2 and do this. Then we should have rotors on there. Yeah. And on here. Doesn't need to be a three, it doesn't matter right now. We have the overflow of screws. So very nice. And we need an overflow for pipes as well. So I'm doing the overflow mes method uh, primarily, and it's working very well for now. Very well for now. So yeah, this is this is working out very nicely. And if we go up top, let's go up top and take a ride on the huge flying thing, whatever its name is. I would actually very much like to name it because I'm sick of calling it big flying thing, huge flying thing, moth, whatever. And... I think it would be nice to give it a name. So for now, I think I'll call it Junior. Yeah, Junior is a nice name. And if you can come up with a better name, then I would love to hear it. And the best name gets into the game. So until I get a name from you guys, this thing is called Junior. And I guess we'll be taking a night flight. And I suppose that's kind of fun. And we will be jumping on right around here. I believe. See? Yeah, it look, looks about right. 
And we go. We are on board. All right. And I think I'll change this six conveyor stack to be two, three conveyor stacks. Because it just, I think it'll look nicer. And there's our factory. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I do enjoy riding this thing. A lot of fun. Look at that landscape, man. It's, it is a beautiful, beautiful game. It really is. It really is. Oh, the moon. Going down quick. Man, it's going down fast. Look at that. Very, very fast. But look at the factory over there. And I do like all of the conveyor belts on the outside of the building there. I think it looks pretty cool. All of the action going on out there. And we are going to come in just above the factory. And guess we'll have to do something weird with this because he is coming in above junior here he is coming in above so we might do a kind of a strange building shape there coming over towards our central hub or our hub which is there and over here when we pass under the the arch here we have the starting area where we started building the base. There's a slug there. I didn't notice that. And there is actually a slug down there in the hole as well. Well, I guess we'll have to go get that at some point. It does look like there is a nice big cave down there. I want to go down and explore that. But I need a gas mask first because there is poison around here. Or explosive to blow up the poison. So yeah, here is our little starting area where we have a bit of iron plate and rod production and also concrete production and there's a coal mine over there where I'm producing coal which was initially to be used for truck fuel but it'll be used for something different now. Maybe explosive because there is a sulfur node right over there as well. Look at the factory. I, I really think it looks cool. I really think it looks cool. We have the bottom floor there for trains when we get to them. And we will need trains. And probably a lot of them. And... Oh, what, what's that over there? I don't know. I'll have to go check that out. Maybe it's more iron. I think it's more iron. Right, so here we come back towards the factory, and we have the motors are probably going to be made up here on this floor. So half of it will be personal storage, half of it will be something else. And here we come around. Over there we have a little bridge which is over to the Caterium ore. All our miners down here. Very cool. I really like like I really like flying on this thing. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And our spaghetti ore train here. And it is very spaghetti, I know that. It'll be fixed at some point. Oh, there's an, a slug over there as well. And there. Hmm. And here we come back to the base. We have our steel smelting there. And then copper below. And below that, iron smelting. And below again, we'll have the trains. And up here, we have the new the wire production which will be used for stators and the overflow will be used for personal usage 
and we can jump up and thanks for the ride right over here thanks for the ride junior thanks for the ride all right and there is our reinforced iron plate or stitched iron plate production there very 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 cool i love it this is just an amazing game an absolutely amazing game one thing that i would really like is like an annihilation bin or a destruction bin or something like that that you could put say we have our personal storage here just put a little destruction bin off to the side or on top or something like that that would destroy any resources that go into it except uh, nuclear waste probably because that's indestructible but if we had one of those then even though there isn't the end game yet then we would have continual usage of our resources and we would be able to kind of gauge how much power we're using because all of the overflow would be disappearing once our personal usage overflow was done so it could also be that you could say if the bin is full then just destroy anything that's going into it that would be really nice because then you would have your whole factory producing all the time it's not like I mean, the, the resources are infinite, right? Uh, an iron node is infinite. You, you're not going to run out of iron in an iron node. So having a, a bin that just destroys whatever goes into it or have the bins being, okay, I'm full. So if something is trying to get into me, I'm just going to destroy it. I think that would be nice because that would kind of give a purpose to... To keep building to keep building but let's have a quick look at our power consumption and see how we're doing as we did put a lot of other stuff online now oh we're not doing very well uh, let's just dump down here and we are going to take some damage yeah i did fall off once maybe twice while i was building all of this stuff but yeah, so we're doing 400 and 500, let's, let's say 600 megawatts at the moment. And basically our modular frames is full. So the entire part of the factory that is doing modular frames is not moving, which is all of these, all of those over there, uh, a full line of copper smelting, and I think a full line of iron smelting as well. And our steel uh, pipe production and so on is not going. So if you could put it into a bin where it would just get deleted. Then you would kind of have to optimize your power consumption a little bit more while you're building up your factory. Because now, I mean, modular frames is full over there. And we don't need to make any more. Reinforced iron plate full over there the machines are not going so they're not using any power so i think that would be a really nice thing to do while we're waiting for the end game to complete being completed i fully understand that it's early access and uh, the, the game is not finished and i'm really happy that the game is not finished because i really love it and i want it to be much much bigger but until we have an end game it would be nice to just have the resources be or the products be auto destroyed somehow when they go into a bin if the bin is full or a separate destruction bin just anything that goes in there just destroy it so that the machines would keep going i think that would be really cool so uh if you're listening coffee stain these uh, kind of a annihilation bin or something like that that would be fantastic but that is all for this time guys so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did why not leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you next time